Hello everyone, Carmine from New York here. 50 year experience photographer here in Manhattan. And I just bought the cheapest, most inexpensive new camera on eBay. Digital camera that is for $3.70. Let's go. Okay, everyone, here it is. This is the $3.70 new digital camera that I found on eBay. Flippy screen. Let me just close this. Okay. So, here's what's going on. I was on eBay, and I was just searching. I put in camera in the search box, and I clicked on uh, ending soonest. All right? And this came up. Here's what the picture looked like on eBay. It was just a picture of the box. This is a generic camera in a generic box. It just says digital camera. Okay, so here's the story. This camera, there was a picture of the camera, but not the main picture. The main picture was just this box. And in their title, the part, the seller, all they had was the word black digital camera. That's it. I'm like, whoa, that's interesting. Nobody's going to find that listing. And sure enough, nobody did. The starting bid was $3.70. I bid $3.70 and I got it. Now, you nice. might say, well, what is it? What's the brand? Here's what I did. I did a little research. Believe it or not, it has a really nice screen, okay? It has a very nice screen on the back, which is a flippy screen, right? For selfies, okay? So I went through the menu once I got it, and I got down to info, and it came up with this little line. It said model CDR10. So of course, I put that into Google and it came up on Amazon. Now, here's the deal. Amazon sells these under many different names because it's generic. The only name on the front, right? It says 4K. There is no maker uh, brand on it like Fuji, like Nikon. It doesn't say anything like that. Okay. So on amazon these are sold under many different names but the one name i did highlight was i'm going to spell it v e t e k right now that's a spin-off on a very very popular well-known uh electronic manufacturer v t e c h okay first thing i want to show you a photograph that i took last evening at sunset. I was shocked too. <laughs> this little camera really just surprised the heck out of me. All right, so let me just go down some specs. Uh, I'm going to put a slide up that has all the specifications. In fact, two slides. Okay. You can pause it if you want to read all the specs. I'll do that now. All right. I hope you read all the specs. I don't want to go through them all. I just want to highlight what I found. Okay. So when I opened the box, right? It came with the camera, of course. Uh, it has a viewfinder on top, but it's just a pass-through. See, it's just a it's just a pass-through uh, window, let's say. Okay, like you would find uh, on a real inexpensive, like an old-fashioned film camera. So what you do? Is you just use the screen on the back or you point it forward if you want to take a selfie right so that's we'll start at the top of the camera right 
So it has a control dial on the top, right? But it's not what you think. It doesn't have program, automat, uh, aperture priority, shutter priority. There's none of that. What it has is still picture mode. Uh, you could take a stop action, you know, time lapse, I should say, and videos, etc. It has the shutter button here. And too close is the on-off button, right? It's just too too close and too similar feeling. Talk about feeling. Now, hold on to your hat. This is not a metal body construction. It's a plastic body construction. However, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell. You see everywhere your finger goes? Right everywhere. Top, bottom, even on the bottom plate. It has that rubberized feeling. I'm going to tell you what it feels like. It feels like the $2,000 Fujifilm X-Pro3. $2,200 camera. But if you've ever picked up a nice Fujifilm camera, that rubberized feel, that's exactly what this feels like. Speaking of that, it has thumb grip on the back, right? For your thumb. It has a grip on the front right here. So look at this. It's just a, it's so natural the way you hold it. Okay, let's continue. It has what they call, what they call a hot shoe on the top. It's not, it's a cold shoe. Okay. Now you would say, why would they have a cold shoe on the top? They thought of everything. I'm telling you, this $3.70 purchase is just, I'm having so much fun. And that's what the meaning of this video is all about. Cheap, under $10 cameras that you can have fun with. On the side here, it has a little door, right? And it has an HDMI port. It has the power port. That's how you charge the batteries. You plug this in here, and then you plug this into a, like a, like a USB, and it charges the battery. It has an indicator on the back when the battery's red when it's charging, the light goes off when it's full, okay? But it has a microphone jack here. So you could, this is for fun, guys. This isn't to make a um, Toyota commercial with. You could put a microphone on the top. Now, I'm not a video guy at all. And it has a microphone jack. Jeez, some $2,000 cameras don't have come with a microphone jack. Okay, uh, this is a speaker right there. That That's not a button, that's a speaker, okay? Uh, to play back your photo photographs, you just put it on playback. Now, I'm gonna get you scared. Did you ever see this on a camera? It says no. <laughs> First time I saw it, I'm like, okay, what's happening? No just means that you have no pictures on the micro SD card, which was included. The micro SD slot is right here. I don't like that it's on the exterior of the camera, right? Any, any hole in the camera, it's just a pathway for moisture and dirt, but it's $3.70. And be careful. That's all. Just be careful. So it came with, hold on to your hat, a 32 gig micro SD card, generic. That means there's no name on it. Just like the camera, no, no name on it. Okay. It's amazing. Now, battery goes in on the bottom. Let me shut it off. Battery goes in the bottom. Okay, it has a little lock, pops up. There's the battery. Okay, this also doubles as the charger. It came with two batteries. These are generic batteries. They're 1500 milliamp, 3.7 lithium ion batteries, right? 
These kind of remind me of, uh, I think I had a Sony with this, with this battery. It's the NP40 battery. Uh, something that reminds me that it was a Sony battery. But I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. And then it just clips on here. Like I said, came with two batteries. So let's continue. Uh, as far as uh, anything else on here, I added the uh, loops, the key rings on the ears for uh, straps. Now let's look at the front again. Let's take another close look at the lens and the front of the camera. All right, they don't they don't pull any punches. This is the flash built in. Okay, it's not a xenon tube. It's LED flash. This is how it works. I'm going to show you an indoor shot now. All right. By the way, that's Dax and Dexter. When you, whenever I make a video, you usually hear them barking. So that's an indoor shot with this right. flash. The way it oh, works. Oh, by the way, it's autofocus. Here's the coolest thing: when you're taking a picture, right? You have to give it, you know, a half a second. You get a red square when it's uh, finding focus, and then it turns green. It's on, then it's in focus, uh, right? A couple more cool. things. It has on the back here, it has W and T for, uh, to go wide and telephoto. It has a built-in, hold on, digital zoom. Don't use it. because it's all pixelated. It's the same thing as if you had cropped your picture, say in post-production, crop it, crop it, crop it. You crop it enough, you're just gonna get all pixelated. Don't use it. The lens, let's take a look at the lens, of course, because that's the most important thing. See, it's very, very tiny, okay? Um, here's the specs on the lens, all right? I'm looking at my notes, because this is, this is so cool. And what makes it cool is the output of the picture, I'll throw up another one now. Pretty cool, right? That was taken last night by me with this $3.70 camera. All right, the specs from the manufacturer are, it's a 7.36 millimeter lens. Now, they don't tell you the size of the CMOS sensor but looking at the finished photographs, right, when I was editing them, uh, you can see uh, this is about a 40 millimeter to 50 millimeter uh, lens if it was 35 full frame, right? Um, they do give you, also in the box for free, this wide angle lens. Let me just take the cap off, right? Which I did use uh, here. Right. which I did use in this picture. And it also has another attachment on the bottom for macro, right? Uh, now the way that this works is, you would unscrew this. You guys know this. This has a 52 millimeter thread. It actually takes filters and lens hoods. We're going to get to that in a minute. So you would screw this on, right? You screw this on. So now it looks like this and it makes it wide angle. Okay. Uh, problems I ran into using this were vignetting. You will get the corners cut off and uh, lens flare. You'll get a lens flare. Okay. From the sun. If you have it angled in such a way, that the sun is somewhere in the direction of the frame, okay? Uh, the way you would use macro, right, is these separate, right? These separate, you would take off the one part and the second part, which says macro, you would leave on. Now it's a macro lens. I didn't have uh, time to try out the macro part. You know, I'm sure it's okay, right? And then that unscrews, 
Dennis Bruce from the camera, right? This was all included for $3.70. By the way, I went on eBay just now, and uh, they're still out there. They're still out there. Um, I don't know, just put in search black digital camera under, under all categories, and you might be lucky. All right. So this just reattaches to there. All right. Now, we have to continue to talk about this lens and this lens mount. So, professional photographer here. What did I do? As soon as I got it the other day, I got a 52 millimeter Hoya UV filter. I put it right on top. And I put a lens hood on top because there's no lens hood. That is not deep enough for any kind of shade, right? So I went out with that setup and you can't do that. Here's the problem. Two problems as a matter of fact. Number one, the lens shade, which wasn't that deep, vignetting. So pss, don't use a lens shade. Number two, hold on to your britches. The lens, right? Well, if you take a picture, especially if the if you, like I was taking sunset pictures and the sun was coming towards the lens, here's what happened, and I've never seen this happen before in my 50 years as a photojournalist. With the lens filter on, the reflection of that small little glass lens reflected onto the inside of the UV filter and was shown on each frame. So, took off the, the UV lens filter. <laughs> can't use a lens filter can't, if, the, if the sun's coming directly at you, but why take a chance? And you get like a target because it's a reflection of that lens glass. Anyway, don't put a filter on it and don't put a lens hood on it. Just use it as it is, okay? Uh, I just wanna highlight a few other things that I found very interesting, all right? I'm just reading from the specs that I found on here. Uh, so it says it's a 48 megapixel camera. 48 megapixels. Is it true? I don't know. I can only read what it says. CMOS. Uh, it has so many things. It's incredible. It supports Wi-Fi, right? You can send your pictures to your phone through Wi-Fi. And you could also use it as a remote. You, you could use your phone as your remote to fire the camera. It's pretty crazy. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Uh... The storage, like I told you, uh, it came with a 32 gig micro SD card, but it says it accepts all the way up to 128 gig micro SD card. I'm sure they're right. Uh, now, there's no RAW, there's no TIFF, it shoots JPEGs. Now, when I, uh, I also clicked on, I want the highest resolution. Uh, the, on the menu on the back, you know, when you set up your camera. Uh, so each file, when I got home and put it in the computer, they were, they the average was a 5.5 megapixel shot, okay? Each frame was about 5.5 megapixels. And once you uh, do post production, you know, you crop and you add a little, uh, maybe a little contrast, you cut down the highlights, you know, just like you normally would with any uh, digital camera right then it, it bumps it up right so you probably end up with around an eight megapixel camera once you uh fix it fix each frame in post-production all right uh it says it's a 16 times digital zoom never tried it because I know 50 years experience, digital zooms stink. Just like in your cell phone, if it's a digital, 99% of cell phones have a digital zoom, they stink, all right? Uh, white balance, you have automatic, sunny, cloudy, tungsten, fluorescent, blah, blah, blah. I just keep it on automatic. Uh, it has uh, exposure control, right? 
you can go to uh, exposure value from negative one to plus, sorry, from negative two to plus two EV. Built-in flash, like I told you, built-in LED flash. ISO, this was the best part. I shot all the photographs you're looking at at ISO 100, the lowest, okay? Because you, you got to realize it's a, you know, a $3.70 camera. Uh, it's not going to have the best sensor. So you got to help it out a little bit and use the lowest ISO. You only have three ISO settings, uh, 100, 200, and 400. Okay. Uh, the aperture is a 3.2. It's a 3 f 3.2 aperture. Oh. Yes, um, here's what I wanted to tell you. Have fun with cheap cameras. Have fun with cheap cameras. Whether it's a cheap film camera or a cheap digital camera, just go have fun. You'll figure out what the best thing this is for, right? It fits in a pocket. If okay, I have a pocket. so uh, like I said, did I mention it was a 52 millimeter uh, thread, which it doesn't come with a lens cap, but you guys, I know you have tons of 52 millimeter lens caps. You gotta put a lens cap. All right, okay. call me from New York here. Subscribe, thumbs up, comment below, and email me. Black and white photo at AOL.com. Goodbye.